If you wanna quickly access and reference the most used parts of your Notion workspace, then you need a personal dashboard. This is a hub where you pull in filtered bits of information that is relevant for you to see on a daily basis. Here's the thing though, personal dashboards are extremely customized to the individual Notion user. Some people wanna see what they're currently reading or a quick snapshot of their meal plan or workouts or the to-do list for the week. What you include really depends on what you want to see. So while I'm not gonna show you how to create a personal dashboard from scratch or even give you a template, I know, I'm really mean, I am going to share a personal tour of my dashboard so you can see what I like to track for myself and get ideas that you could use to create your own. Hi, I'm Kaylin. Welcome back to my channel where we nerd about all things planning, productivity, and personal growth, and of course, Notion. If you haven't subscribed yet, please click that button and you'll get notified whenever I make another video. All right, let's start the tour. My personal dashboard is a Notion page on my sidebar and I have used a different color icon than my other pages just so it stands out a little bit more and it's easy to find because I access it multiple times a day. On my dashboard here at the top, you'll see a weather widget. Now this is nothing that is natively included in Notion. It uses an outside site called indify.co and that's where someone else has created widgets specifically for Notion so you can go grab the code and embed it into your Notion workspace using an embed block. So over on Indify, it's free up to a certain number of widgets. I have a weather widget here. And so if I go into that, then I can customize it to the city that I want, the number of days that I want to see. And then I believe I have some sort of control here over like the color scheme that it appears. And then down here is the link for the coded widget. So you just click copy to copy it to your clipboard. Go back over to Notion, create a new block using the slash command and searching for the embed block. You'll click on that and then you'll paste your link in here and click embed. And then once it embeds into your page, then you can drag it so it's widespread across your entire page and adjust it to how you want it to look. The next area I have are life areas. So I have five major life areas, home management, health and wellness, leisure, finance, and work. So that is my online business. So this is a database I've created. I'm showing it in gallery view. And in each of these pages is another hub related to that topic. So here on my health and wellness page, I can access my food diary, workout log, uh, my medical visit log, which I just did a video on how to build that from scratch. I'll link it below and a few other pages that I just find helpful to reference. The next area, I have two columns. So here in the left column, I'm using a call out block for some quick links that I want easy access to. That is a common theme in my Notion hub. Wherever I am in Notion, I want access to things that I might need to look at or click on depending on where I am in my workspace. And so these are the five things right now. They do change every few months, depending on what I want to see quickly. So I've got my weekly planning routine, some affirmations that I just like to repeat when I'm not feeling confident about myself, my reading hub, my meal planner, which I reference every day for whatever we're making for lunch and dinner. And then I am very into tracking my business statistics right now, so I want easy access to that page. On the right-hand side is a brain dump box that goes right into my master task list database. So anytime throughout the day, if I think of something and I'm not sure when I wanna do it, but I just wanna make sure I don't forget that task, I can click new and add it right here. And then once I add a category, it will disappear from this section. I did a build with me video on how to build this brain dump box. So if you're interested in watching that, I'll leave a link to that below as well. Under that, I have another view of my tasks, so I'm linking again to my master tasks database, except this one is filtered to show anything that is not overdue, not complete, 
and assigned to me and also has the due date is a week out. So it's always showing me a week worth of tasks no matter what day I'm on. I also have this grouped by timing, which is a formula that I created as a property in my task database. I'll just show you what it looks like. So based on the due date, it shows text in this formula block. So if I click on that, you'll see like if status is done, then make sure that it says done. If it's due today, it says today or tomorrow. If it's overdue, then say needs attention. So I have this grouped by that today, tomorrow and upcoming. And then over here on the last tab where that little exclamation point is, those are all my tasks filtered to that property saying needs timing. So these are overdue tasks. And I've had the last two days off, so a few tasks have piled up since then. This next tab with the slash through it is a list of tasks where the status is now. So it's something simmering on my brain that I want to do soon, but doesn't have a due date. So due date is empty. That way, when I'm done with my tasks for the week, if I've gotten through them all, then I can go over to this tab and say, okay, what do I have time to tackle from this list? And then the tab with the little person on it is anything that I've delegated to my team. Let's go over to the left again and you'll see this week, which is linking to my week's database. So I have one page corresponding to every week. I have this showing as a gallery view, only filtered to show this week. This is where I can see my theme for the week. So what am I focusing on in terms of content creation? What are my focus projects this week? And then this is a roundup of my workouts from my daily journal database. So it's saying I've done three workouts this week so far. And down here, this is a summarization of the time that I have logged for my work hours. I just like to keep track to make sure I'm not spending a ton of time doing work stuff, but I'm also not undercutting the amount of time that I'm spending on work. And also tracking my time like a normal job just helps me stay focused when I'm working from home. Speaking of that daily journal database, that is what I've pulled in under daily habits. I'm showing this as a table view filtered to just this week. So each of these pages here are entries in my daily journal. I have a lot in my daily journal, a lot of things that I like to keep track of, but here I've just filtered it to show the four different habits, actually five habits that I'm working on. The four are just a simple check mark, and then the workout is making sure that I get some sort of workout in at least four to five times a week. Going back to the left-hand columns, we're kind of like switching back and forth, is a location section. Now, this is not going to be relevant for everyone, but I have mentioned before that I do live in an RV and we travel quite a bit in the RV. And so I'm, I want some sort of travel planner to keep track of our campgrounds and destinations and the activities that we want to do. So this is showing where we are currently. And in here is the list of activities that I have for us to do in that section. So it's just nice to be able to see that. And I also like, it. again, this is another gallery view. You can see that I love gallery views because I'm a very visual person when it comes to Notion. And it just adds a little bit of flair to my dashboard. Underneath that is a quote that I've just pulled in from the internet using the image block. And then over here on the right, I'm pulling in another database. This one is my bookshelf database and showing filtered to show only the books that I'm currently reading and the progress I am in each of them. And then this last part of the two column section is my education section. I always love learning. I am a proponent of continuous learning even as an adult. And so I always have a course or two that I'm going through at one time. This last section is my content calendar for my personal brand and then for my travel brand. So this is bringing in all the content from my content database showing as a calendar view by month. So I've got emails, YouTube videos, Instagram posts, newsletters, I guess, yeah, those are emails, blog posts for each of those brands just showing when they are due. And if I need to move something around, like I have moved this Instagram post around so many times, I can just easily swap it to a different day and it automatically changes the published date. 
those are just the little pieces of information from different databases, different parts of my Notion workspace that I don't necessarily want to be jumping around and wasting time trying to find them. What I love about Notion is that you can bring them together on one page, you can filter it to see just the things that you want to see. That's the power of databases. And so I hope this was helpful at least to show you what a personal dashboard could look like. And don't be worried that like you have to have a personal dashboard right away. It does take some time. I didn't implement one until I knew how I wanted to use Notion and I had quite a few pages built up. Then I understood exactly what I wanted to see on a personal dashboard. If you're scratching your head saying, um, this looks way more complicated than I thought, I'm not sure I want to even try Notion, I've got you. I just launched a class called Notion Anatomy, and that is going to teach you the basics of Notion pages, the basics of Notion databases, so that you can get up and running in Notion. And not only that is we are going to go through a build together of a meal planner slash recipe book, so you're going to walk away with a functional setup of a practical way that you can actually use Notion in your life. I get really excited and nerdy about Notion and I would love to geek out with you in this class. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you visit the link below and get signed up for that. I hope this video gave you an idea of what to put on your own personal dashboard. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And if you had any questions about anything that you saw here or felt like I went too fast, make sure you leave a question in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you. I'll see you in the next video.